study that in Harvard University in the USA, he has done some research on mindfulness as a spiritual care person in hospitals in the US, and also taught at universities as a lecturer in Pali, which is the language of the original Buddhist sacred text. Bante currently is a resident Buddhist monk at the West End Buddhist Temple in Mississauga, Canada. He helps children, youth, and adults with their spiritual counseling needs and teaches Buddhist meditation to groups here in Canada and around the world. As Janet had mentioned this morning, spiritual care practitioners use mindfulness often in their work. Mindfulness is a Buddhist practice that was popularized in healthcare by John Kabat-Zinn. Bante, we look forward to hearing from you your talk on mindfulness from a Buddhist perspective. Awesome. Thank you, Chris, for the kind introduction. And thank you for inviting me to speak about mindfulness. So I know this is the afternoon session, so wakey, wakey. It's time to really <laughs> um, um, be, um, be really awake after maybe uh, having your lunch. Um, so I'll try my best to make this simple. Um, so what I did was I prepared these slides. Um, actually, the slides were prepared for children. And then when I, when I thought about this workshop, I thought maybe I'll just go with it and add a couple of more slides so that um, it works for any age group uh, and makes it simple to share some of the content here. I hope you all can see the screen. Um, so nothing much on this first screen, uh, it's just this image of a monk seated in a cave and some other monks, I would say mindfully walking uh, in the village. Uh, so, and this is the Supreme Buddha, he has uh, introduced Buddhism to the world. Buddhism uh, is about uh, awakening your mind and mindfulness has a huge part in it. Uh, and I will explain who the Buddha is through just this one uh, gatha, one Pali verse. The English translation is also there. The Buddha himself said, you know, how did he become the Buddha? So it's like a lotus rising up, unsmeared by water. Unsmeared am I by the world. And so Brahman, I am awake. So Brahman is the person he was talking to. And when the Brahman asked, you know, who are you? You know, you look so different. You're, the Brahman only recognized, you know, that he is a special person by observing the footprints and then went on looking for this person and then found the Buddha and asked, you know, you look so different. Are you a divine being, you know? And the Buddha said, no, are you a um, heavenly being? Uh, I mean, are you a human being um, who is special? The Buddha said, no. Are you a divine musician? The Buddha said, no. So who are you? The Buddha said, I am the Buddha. I became awakened and I remain unsmeared with the mud of the world. That means he cleansed his mind through this. As you can see, um, I try to explain lotus mind through um, lotuses and then there is this light, something radiant above. And you can observe uh, my hands right now. <clears throat> this is a lotus. And when this lotus gets the sunlight in the morning, it begins to open. And it opens and opens and opens and inside you see a beautiful layer of petals and inside of that layer there's another beautiful layer of petals and then inside of it another layer of petals and this is your mind this is what the buddha did he went deep inside deep within and he 
uh, he was able to realize that you know just like in a lotus um, the petals inside are more delicate but petals outside are exposed to the nature and has all the dust and dirt and some coarse you know nature to those petals so when you use mindfulness to awaken your mind you see you becoming sweeter and more delicate gentler and fragranceful inside and how you do that is you you know doing meditation and i hope to do a bit of meditation at least for 5 minutes in this group but someone said they were still finishing lunch so i thought maybe we can do it um at some point but not right now um so this this image explains you know why we meditate uh if you have done any meditation before um uh, it may feel like this you know um it feels so good to empty the trash you know we have all this it's like it's like you eating food and the body knows what to take and what to remove and the mind doesn't really know what to remove so that we need to use some techniques uh some kind of uh a breathing meditation or mindfulness in breathing mindfulness is in walking mindfulness in talking you know these techniques so that you can begin to empty the trash that is being accumulated in your mind all right so this is still setting up the background before we learn about what mindfulness actually is and um this is actually that monk ajahn cha from the thai forest tradition um so i have put veki veki before him uh, i mean right on the side of him to remind ourselves that through closing your eyes and sitting quietly um you kind of close all the external doors uh, seeing hearing smelling tasting physical sensations and thinking so these are six doors that you know that are open but when you begin to close each of these each one of these doors you begin to really wake up um it's as if you are sleeping but you begin to wake up you begin to bring up these inner energies into completely into your own a uh, sort of like your own control um and it has some remarkable power especially um power to deal with depression and anxiety things that some people deal with um the buddha said you know if you are depressed you are living in the past if you are anxious you are you are living in the future if you are at peace you are living in the present and it is this mindfulness that reminds you to come to the present continuously you know come stay in the present which is a gift you have and often times because of overthinking or um uh because of busyness we forget that this present moment exists you know the buddha uh, was asked once you know what ha- what have you gained from meditation and he said nothing however buddha said let me tell you what i have lost i have lost anger anxiety depression insecurity fear of old age and death so these fears have been removed from him and imagine a mind like that mind that is free from anxiety free from depression free from th- these fears and especially a mind that is free from anger he must be such he must be such a wonderful person to be around be with um because we rarely find um a person who is completely free from anger right and uh, so um you may think you know maybe it's you know I, i'm too late to learn uh, about all these you know maybe this is too heavy for me but the buddha said you know who has been formerly formerly negligent but later is not illuminates this world like a moon freed from cloud so there is no age restriction as to when you will learn mindfulness when you will begin your you know 
focusing practice or meditation. And this is one of my favorite quotes. Um, before this is that one slide I wanted to really highlight on the deeper we dive, the less we mind the upsetting waves. As in, as if you are in the ocean, you know, you go deeper and you don't feel the upsetting waves from the above, from, from the surface, all the currents, all the winds and turbulence, you don't feel them. That's why we, you know, need to unplug and go deeper um, using mindfulness. And here is, you know, what mindfulness actually, um, all right, so... Mindfulness uh, in Pali and Buddhist context, you know, this is how, this is actually taken from a piece of writing I did uh, before. And you can see Stanley and Bhikkhu Analeo, John Kabat-Zinn uh, and Venerable Gunaratana, they all have written that mindfulness means sati in Pali language, is often understood as the present moment awareness. So, um, for a beginner of mindfulness training, this present moment awareness can be a hard step to understand because the moment you try to focus on the moment, the moment is gone, right? Tell me about that, you know. It's just so hard and it feels like it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's like a whole work to do. You know, can we just have something that, that's about not doing anything? <laughs> So this will eventually be something like that, you know, not having to do things always because we are all always driven by uh, the impulses of wanting to do things. But mindfulness tells us, you know, just to be. So it is therefore important to note that, you know, in early Buddhist teachings, um, in the earliest teachings, the Buddha doesn't say much about present moment. So instead, he's used the word, you know, pachupanakala, which means the present, just be present, which is kind of doable to us. Um, and then it improves into the present moment awareness when you get better at it, when you get uh, very alert and aware. So uh, sati uh, then is not presented alone in the in the Buddhist canon. Um, often it is accompanied with Samma Sati, which means right mindfulness. So the opening practice um, usually um, is Samma Sati, which is right mindfulness, and then it leads into uh, final awakening. I have a story about this. You know, there was this security guard guarding a huge mansion and uh, there was this one lady who lived in this house in, in this mansion she was the owner so um, she told this security guard uh, i'm leaving some for some business and uh, be mindful if any burglars come and that's all she said so she left and some burglars came um, and they they stole things and the security guard was you know there uh, all he had to do was you know be being mindful so he did that and the lady came back and and um, so she asked you know what has happened where are all the things and the security guard said you know i was mindful when they came I was mindful when they were loading the stuff to the truck. I was mindful when they were leaving. <laughs> so do you think that is right mindfulness? That is not, you know, he had to take actions too. He had to, <laughs> he had to prevent certain things from happening. That's why we need mindfulness. So there is right mindfulness and that means there's also wrong mindfulness. We have all kinds of wrong things that we can focus on. <laughs> Perhaps, you know, the food uh, that you don't want to eat in the fridge, you know, that you've already eaten and you, your mind tells you to go open the fridge and take more 
chocolate pudding or something that your mind craves but your body doesn't actually need that so <laughs> there you need some prevention so mindfulness has the preventative power so that way it also has wisdom has an has a wisdom aspect with it let's move on learning um, the pali uh, background a little bit on mindfulness so the literal meanings of mindfulness sati means presence remembrance especially with remembrance you know someone who is practicing mindfulness um, especially after eating if they want to if they have their cell phone with them and now they have finished eating and they are yet to wash their plates and they get a phone call but immediately mindfulness reminds them that oh before i get distracted with this phone call i must finish washing the plate you know you don't leave it for somebody else in in especially if you are living in a community place you don't you don't leave it for somebody else uh, so you finish the task you are, you don't become forgetful so mindfulness helps you to bring those um activities to completion in a way that you complete the task you began but what if you forget something so there is this monk a venerable pemasiri from sri lanka he lived in burma he's a famous meditation master and he tried to learn whether forgetfulness and mindfulness you know has any connection between the two so um when what at the time what he was practicing was like the security guard you know he was like i'm walking 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 i am going to the river 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 and i'm picking up my robes picking up my robes and um, and then all of a sudden he realized he has forgotten his soap because in burma you can go to a river and just do bathing so then his friend monks told him that you are your mindfulness is not right you are not doing it right you always say you are practicing mindfulness and you are forgetting things then this made me him you know go back to the scripture and really you know question you know am i doing this right or is it this that i repeatedly tell myself that i am doing certain things or should i just be aware as i am doing all these activities suppose um you know in that case in in the case of that monk you know he he is walking to the river all he has to do is to be mindful of his one activity and liberate himself from all the rest that way he has that small liberation small freedom otherwise he can think of all kinds of things like uh somebody you know saying something rude to him and that can come and haunt him at that time and you know all the anger can you know come up so he can be mindful also about what his mind is doing while he is doing all these activities that way um so sati has a uh, proper attention and proper intention as well which are important elements of mindfulness practice so um in intentness of mind wakefulness of mind so that has to be a focus especially when you do mindfulness training you start to think um you know what is my goal when you set up a goal is this helping me to be on that goal um because when you come to a teacher to learn mindfulness the first thing um both the teacher and you need to figure out is whether you are on the middle path if you are in an extreme of something we ask are you willing to come to the middle grounds first are you willing to come to middle path you know not in being in an extreme only then this is going to work you so you have a goal um after coming to middle grounds you have a goal to improve yourself um to a greater play, you know it's like when the king kosala who had um a, 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 an an eating disorder and and he went to the buddha the buddha taught him mindfulness said you know uh, next time when you eat don't 
eat uh, 16 plates of rice cut it down to 15 can you imagine someone eating 16 plates of rice you know cut it down to 15 but so you don't do it immediately like you don't bring it down to just one plate because it has to be comfortable for you for your body so the the practice you know that was taught to him was individual based and this monk uh, in Burma, Bhante Pemasri, also learned that, you know, he had to have a goal. Maybe my goal should be to eliminate anger. So he went on working on that while being mindful. Am I, you know, at peace when I'm doing these activities? And can I give 100% attention to the activity that I'm doing? And that way I'm here, I am, you know, fully available in this atmosphere and even if I'm talking to someone I'm totally available for them I don't have anything else you know you know the pressure of something else running in the back of your head while talking to someone you can give full attention and it it creates some anxiety in you so think about these goals like the monk like the king king did and eventually they came to a greater happiness so mindfulness um, is it its goal is to make you feel happy not uh, make you a person who suffers you know the Buddha's teachings the Buddha said don't live uh, uh, don't dukkho viharati is not sh should not be your goal dukkho viharati means you live as a person who is in so much suffering this teaching has to help you to live as a happy person. So, uh, so mindfulness has all these meanings, you know, alertness, conscience. I can share these slides with you, actually. Uh, since mindfulness defies definition, uh, this poses a unique, diffic poses unique difficulties for academic research on mindfulness, which then requires it to be grasped or captured by language. So thus, you know, understanding mindfulness by the symbolic words has made various interpretations beyond its intended sense. Therefore, mindfulness has to be understood by one's own experience without being caught by various symbolic denotations of words. So here are some definitions. Pante Gunaratana says mindfulness is an activity and he again said, uh, also, John Kabat-Zinn said, mindfulness is non-judgmental awareness. So, in the context of establishing mindfulness, the famous term is Satipatthana, which is a discourse taught by the Buddha. So, in that meditation, it is due to the presence of Sati, mindfulness, that one is able to remember what is otherwise too easily forgotten, the present moment. So that is Bhikkhu Analeo saying. So uh, that means uh, mindfulness reminds you to come to the present and then eventually to the present moment awareness. So to make it easy for you to understand, think about this very breath that we are taking now. Is it happening in the past? Obviously no. Is it happening in the future? No, this breath is happening right now. See, that way, this breath is reminding us to be present. Be here. Be right here, right now. What if you are anxious and that is your present experience? Isn't that an interesting thing to, you know, think about? Like I said before, you have right things to be mindful about and wrong things to be mindful about. If your meditation is increasing your anxiety, you aren't doing a meditation. You are doing anxiety or something. <laughs> right? So, what should we do? This is why, you know, you, we need to use... Um, mindfulness in a way that is helping us that is conducive to a peaceful existence in your body
and that way when there is hyper anxiety or some intense experience that you are feeling all you will do at that time is not choosing a reaction or anything not judging that experience because anything has a life and it has to live fully when when it has come to be your experience and allow it to live and allow it to disappear and the moment it has disappeared there is so much light in you and at that moment begin uh you know making more space for that peace and that way you are patiently doing this practice kind of blending it with what arises and passes away in your ex- in your being in your experience in your life because we have so much going on and each and every one of us has different experiences different baggages when any of these things come the first thing the buddha said is you know be mindful but before that be free from um remorseful things be free from heavy anger and only then you are able to establish something you have if you don't have mindfulness how can you establish it right so that's why we need to kind of be free from such heavy things first allow them to disappear and that way you are able to stay in bear attention so that is the next definition you know uh, venerable jnana ponika says mindfulness is bear attention and um, amishi says mindfulness is a mental mode characterized by full attention to present moment experience without judgment elaboration or emotional reactivity so broadly conceptualized mindfulness has been described as a kind of non elaborative non judgmental present centered awareness in which each thought feeling now feelings included or sensation that arises in the attentional field is acknowledged and accepted as it is not reacted so this this is kind of a broader conclusive definition of mindfulness so in buddhist mindfulness we also have this goal of um abandoning self identification with things especially with hospital patients um i've said you know this pain that you feel um you don't have to identify with it it arises when causes and conditions are there and it will vanish when these causes and conditions disappear allow it to be there and it will disappear you don't have to intensify it by owning it right and there are people who have found it very helpful especially when they are in a hospital bed grappling with some unavoidable pain that's why you know the famous quote uh, pain is inevitable uh, suffering is optional that's buddhist wisdom So mindfulness meditation has been shown to facilitate attentional self regulation and so self regulating um yourself um I've done research on this we did it in uh, faculty of cognitive science in Italy um with bunch of researchers professors and we have published it and I can share that article for you later um about mindful self regulation um and it has proven that you know people who have long time practice of mindfulness had had the ability to cope with all these emotions especially emo- regulating emotion emotional regulation so you can cope with things better with mindful practice so buddhist mindfulness is practiced in order to release the tight hold of self concern that's one goal self conscious nas self consciousness and selfishness including the idea of a self who is observing if so if someone is not observing then who is the you know who's doing all this right 
you can ask these questions you know we can have a q and a session later so this conditioning that made us think that there is an observer but when you break things down it's just like a car you know all these pieces put together that makes it look like a car but in the end when all these pieces are separate you you don't see a car <laughs> um just that image for you to understand so um mindfulness is non egoistic alertness it takes place without reference to self with mindfulness one sees all phenomena without references to concepts like me my or mine well when i taught this to a bunch of friends uh, also in italy um they said it's um easy to understand that there is a self than trying to understand that there is no self <laughs> so uh i understand that because talking about self and talking about uh, that there's no self these are hard things for people to understand in the you know without having some background in and some concepts in their minds so we aren't going there right now but i hope the car analogy will help you it's just like pieces put together makes it look like a car and even a uh, rock when we see in the shape of a car will remind us of a car but in reality there's no car in there it's it's, it's just concepts created all right so um so we spent 30 minutes talking about mindfulness um this quote says roll your mind or else it will roll you and you can see in this image uh these bulls pulling a cart and so heavy load and the buddha observed this at his time there were many bull of carts and he said you know when you act or speak with a negative mind with some impurities in your mind suffering follows you like a bull of cart behind the the oxen they they are helpless you know unless you help them remove it you know they have to carry it to the destination it's inevitable when you speak or act with an impure mind suffering follows you but if you speak and act with a pure mind happiness follows you like this shadow here and it's not heavy it's always there with positive happy uh, mind so the buddha said if with an impure mind one speaks or acts suffering follows him all right so shall we do a bit of meditation now is that a good time for meditation um it's it's optional but <laughs> um i am sure most of you want to try this um so let's do about uh 10 minutes maybe less uh if i have the bell ready this is to prepare you please close your eyes i know patricia did some i was observing and doing her activities this morning but this will be a different experience experience for you close your eyes sit comfortably keeping your back straight unless you have a medical condition you know uh sitting cross legged um will be preferred or half lotus posture if you are able to now that your eyes are closed
Scan your body from head to toes. There's one person who is not mute. Now they are all mute. Perfect. Thank you. And uh, scan your body from head, you know, starting from your forehead. Release and relax all the muscles. This body scanning is just to relax you perfectly. Relax your shoulders, relax between your shoulders and your forehead, your face, your neck, the back of your head. And your chest now, your abdomen, belly area. your back, your spine, your waistline, the sitting bones. Release and relax the muscles in your sitting bones area. And release and relax your knees. Comfortably place your feet and at any moment Feel free to adjust your posture mindfully so you have unbroken awareness and mindfulness during this practice. And you are grounded deeply and rooted deeply to the ground like a tree like we observed this morning, providing food, nutriments to each and every one of us, absorbing positive energy, welcoming it to the center of your heart, allowing things to be and you breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in Breathe out Take a deep breath in And breathe out Take a deep breath in Breathe out. Take a deep breath in. Breathe out. Breathe in peace. Breathe out, letting go. Peace. Let go. Peace. Let go. Now that your eyes are closed, your ears don't pay attention to disturbing anything. So your brain does not send signals to your eyes or to your ears. Your nose, tongue, the body are also relaxed so your brain has less activities. Basically seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, physical sensations, all these activities are less inept and inactive now.
not much to observe. That way you have some sense of freedom, liberation right here, right now. And you are thinking. You have visitors in your mind, the thoughts. But with the focus on your awareness on breathing, mindfulness in breathing, your mind also has only one activity to focus on, which is to focus on your breath. Take a long breath in. and long breath out. Notice the feelings and sensations of calmness. Long breath in. Long breath out. Mindfully you breathe in, mindfully you breathe out. Experiencing the full breath, you breathe in and breathe out. Beginning to the end, you experience it with full awareness. And you are calm and more peaceful and at some point you may feel like this breath becomes so subtle that you don't almost feel it. The breath is either long breath or short breath. You observe them as they happen. Allowing things to fade away. The background noises and the surrounding will disappear. The body feels calmer and more at peace.
whatever arises, allow them to be. Allow them to live and disappear. But your focus is on breath. Establishing full awareness with your in-breath and out-breath, breathing in and breathing out. You feel your breath through your nostrils and you are aware. No noise is disturbing us, it is us disturbing the noise. If you react, you don't have to. Allow this breath to become so subtle, gladdening your mind, allowing joy to arise, Pleasure born of seclusion, seclusion from the body. You breathe in and breathe out. Now you can hear the ding, the bell, and slowly come out of this meditation. Awesome. <clears throat> I guess um, the remaining time we can use for questions and answers because I have more to share but I need to hear from you all as well. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, Greta. There are presented many kinds of mindfulness. There's um, certainly the one that you just shared. It was, it was, it was great. Um, Thank you. But, you know, I've, I've, been, I've met um, or done one with an orange or an apple. Or, um, uh, um, and you mentioned walking meditation, I think, earlier. I, I guess, um, uh, yeah, okay. um, and chocolate, even, I think. <laughs> Oh, no. So, I'm just wondering if if you can, uh, yeah, um, maybe um, I don't want to say simplify, but uh, kind of pare down what what is essential. I think, and maybe or or how to develop a practice of mindfulness or to uh, cultivate that um, without over complicating it. <laughs> I think. Uh, well, I think this at least for myself. This is this is a great question, and this is part you know this is partly why the Buddha taught mindfulness. Um, so mindfulness, um, well, 
eat whether you are eating a chocolate or an orange or um so the buddha taught mindfulness in six ways what we did right before this q and a session just moments before is mindfulness with breathing and this that is the first aspect the second one is mindfulness on the four main postures sitting posture you know walking posture um lying down and uh, what is the other one a standing posture often times we may not notice that we've done these activities but we have done them it's as if you went to the kitchen and you don't know how you got there <laughs> it's as if you went to work and you don't even know how you how you whether you drove to work or whether you took the subway to work <laughs> so there's this something that you were mindful in your mind and it made you forget all the rest that you were doing so these four postures kind of is an entry way to focus on the third aspect of mindfulness which is mindfulness on all the activities that you are doing whether you are extending your arms um or um folding your arms or eating an orange you no know, you can be mindfulness with in the toilet or driving or anything you do and you give um keeping your goal in mind your goal is to eliminate anger completely it's possible that's what buddha did that's what i am doing not that i have reached that final goal yet but keeping whatever the goal in your mind you you know you observe when i'm doing all these activities am i you know giving attention to it at not too focused on all the things but kind of that one activity like drinking a bit of water are, are you aware and you know this is not to collect a bunch of memories this is to also observe what your mind is doing when you are doing these activities so that's kind of similar to chocolate orange or any kinds of mindfulness so it has all the things that any that any person does so mindfulness has all this range of activities that you can um focus on and that's the third the fourth one is you know observing your body as to uh the 32 aspects of a human body like hair nails your skin uh, body hair in um the bones heart liver all this that you don't see but it's like a opening a bag of grains and uh, just seeing these things why that way strong attachment to this body vanishes and you live a simple life some people struggle with sexual addiction because they don't have a full understanding about what is inside of this body and so focusing mindfully on the repulsiveness of body makes you a beautiful person the buddha said somebody will expect as expect the opposite but it makes you a beautiful person you live a beautiful life especially whether you are married or unmarried you have one person that you focus on not too many not too much clutter in your head and mindfulness is essential mindfulness in repulsiveness of body is essential for that type of person especially and then mindfulness in four elements so from 32 aspects of the body to four elements just you don't have to focus on 32 now four elements and then the last stage is observing a corpse in decay you know observing uh, nine stages of a corpse in decay now this is a corpse and my body will be like this do i have to be this attached to this body i can keep it beautiful but i don't have to be ghostically 
uh, boast about it or anything. It's just this body. It's the nature of a body to decay and it becomes a skeleton and eventually it becomes soil. And that's all. So you see, it's, it's, it's ultimately telling us that if this body vanishes that way, um, what are the experiences that are arising and passing away within the mind? And you become mindful and you become an observer there. And that way, you don't see a self arising. You see causes and conditions bringing the idea of a self. And you become um, super... Uh, your mind becomes super beautiful. When you, do, when you realize that you don't have to take things personally. Anyway, that's the response, not exactly to only to that question, but a whole range of, you know, ways that the Buddha has taught mindfulness. And if you read the Anapanishati Sutta, that's the Sutta on breathing meditation, there are 16 steps of mindfulness practice. You breathe in and breathe out, uh, especially with breathing. 16 stages of breathing meditation. Uh, Anapanasati Sutta uh, in that you breathe in with happiness breathe out with happiness so you see you do all these activities with breathing and that way you become um, happier with the practice mm, do we have time for more questions so we have about two minutes I guess Or did I answer Greta's question fully enough? No, you did. Thank you. Thank um, you. Uh, what is a t typical day of meditation like for you? So, um, if I meditate. <laughs> <laughs> so, if okay. I meditate, you know. <laughs> um, you think monks in a monastery are meditating all the time? That's not true. <laughs> Um, they get super busy, either like you, you know, in a garden, having to work with the lawn. But I apply mindfulness with whatever I do, and that has helped me over the time. I've dealt with tons of anxiety in my life, you know, childhood unresolved anxiety. And with meditation and mindfulness practice, I have felt like I have become wiser, uh, especially in terms of dealing with uh, all this. Especially, I have trouble, I had trouble, um, I, I think this is part of social anxiety, the way I lived in Sri Lanka with a non-social family. My father was very reclusive and he is now a Buddhist monk. I think that suits his lifestyle. Uh, so, uh, I, I, I am thankful to the Buddha's teachings and mindfulness for teaching me um, how to deal with that kind of intense suffering that arose in me at certain experiences. So we do, I do a sitting at evening um, to uh, maintain my peacefulness. So I do a bit of chanting and sitting and that way, um, and if I can do it longer, that's so helpful to me, I, and I know that. Um, uh, now that full moon kind of is waning, and with that I'm also observing all that and sitting in the open because it's not cold outside. So, uh, but other than that, we do our meal services and the whole schedule at the monastery, um, just regular activities, giving talks and stuff like that. Anything else? There is, one, there is one question on the chat. Mm -hmm. um, um, Shannon asks, what are the benefits of group meditation? For example, the meditation of our group experience together today. Well, this is in a Zoom setting, but if you were here with me, mm -hmm. I'm sure, especially in a shrine room, there is so much energy that you will start to feel in a group. Mm -hmm. And that's one benefit of a group meditation. And by observing, you can learn things like how someone is seated, you know, is it something you will try, you know, stuff like that, the external observations. 
but obviously going to a group will be very helpful unless you know in that group there is always someone disturbing with heavy coughing stuff like that but meditation tells you you know it's part of meditation to hear things and like i said noises are inevitable right uh, it's us disturbing the noise <laughs> if you react so you don't you realize you know you don't have to react to these things it's just you know can we stop all the noises from the outside world you can't <laughs> they come just as you sit uh, begin a sitting meditation at home somebody will turn on the on the tv set and eventually you realize oh you don't have to um your brain will start to pay attention to the tv set but eventually it will realize that oh nothing there to observe and it will eventually come back to you awareness will come back to you that way you can make peace especially it's like you buying a house near highway and all the noises disturb you on the first night but when your body gets used to it you don't even notice that you live by a highway so i had that experience and it's just you wouldn't have to you don't have to react to all these noises all right we have one more question do you use a mantra I don't but in our tradition buddho is a mantra taught by thai monks which is not thinking that word buddho all the time I have done it as a child but uh, because I don't find it in the buddha's teachings in the scripture I have read so mm-hmm. I haven't done it myself uh, but if I wasn't uh, a if i didn't learn all this scripture buddhist stuff i would have tried that myself but i know in vajrayana tradition um om mani padme hum or something is taught as a mantra and uh, i have done it with patients in hospitals because they are familiar with it but i don't do it myself as a practice i find um, other techniques like breathing and repulsiveness of the body friendliness meditation um there are and compassion meditation equanimity meditation joy meditation more working for me okay yeah okay so are there any more questions all right well thank you very much i was so relaxed i was almost asleep yay <laughs> amazing <laughs> happy to um, hear but um yeah but no it's it's I really felt I learned a lot. Um, so thank you very much for coming. Very You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, shall we do a virtual clap or the hand wave? I guess. And you can put the clap reaction on your on your um screen. So is it time for me to leave? I think so yes is that awesome. okay it is after 2:30 but thank you again Yeah.